share your word. Lord, we want to pray that God, that you will cause that this word shall be clearly heard and understood. Father, we pray that God, nothing about the human limitation that we have will be allowed to distort the efficacy and the power of your word to be able to heal and to deliver men and women. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I have two things on my mind, but recently there are some there were some things there were some things that you know began to happen that I felt I should address a little bit. Just this week I was I don't know what I was doing. I was on the internet. And I saw this news report. And there's this old man. Very ugly man. You, you know. And he has this young girl. That is his girlfriend. But he has a wife and three children. He's not even divorced. Are you with me? Yeah. And he was overheard. Telling his girlfriend. That. She, he wasn't happy that she invites black people to his business. He, what kind of business does he have? He owns a basketball team. All the people who work for him and play for him mostly are black people. His fans, the people who make him rich. And you know what? His girlfriend is young enough to be his grandchild and she's half black now it made me begin to think what kind of society are we where a man who has so much influence in society who is married with children can have the audacity not to say what he said but to come out in public and sit with a woman that is not his wife and be on TV and everybody knows that's his girlfriend and the society is not revolted at that. But what is the society revolted at? They're revolted at a private conversation that he had with that girlfriend. Huh? People are offended. How could he say that about people of another race? I don't care what he says about anybody. I care that you in this society can see a grandfather sitting with a girl his grandchild's age. You know he is married with three own grown children. And he can even sit in the front row in TV. And you, the people of this society, are not even ashamed to identify with him. You deserve what you get from such people. Amen. So, I want to talk a little bit about racism. I want us to talk about it from the word of God. And there's some scriptures. There's some scriptures I am going to share with us this morning. And if you have your pen and paper, I want you to take this down. I want you to write down these scriptures. Praise God. First of all, in the Old Testament, I want you to start with Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 to 6. Numbers chapter 12. Verse 1 to 16. I'll repeat my Old Testament scriptures. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 1 to 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse 1 to 6. Numbers chapter 12. Verse 1 to 16. And in the New Testament. Acts chapter 17. Verse 22 to 31. Acts chapter 6. Verse 1 to 7. Galatians chapter 3. 
verse 23 to 28. I'll repeat the New Testament scriptures. Acts chapter 17, verse 22 to 31. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 to 28. Amen. 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 Praise God. Get ready for a ride this morning. Amen. Get ready for a ride this morning. Praise God. Amen. If somebody has... Um, Let's start with Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Brother, can you read for me Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 7? Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Amen. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Amen. And daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Amen. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and he grieved him at his heart. Verse 7. And Six. The Lord, verse Thank you. Six. Six. Okay. Amen. Amen. This is the first place in the scripture we begin to see God have some kind of distaste for intermarriage between two different kinds of people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says that the sons of God saw what? The daughters of men. Now, you go to 9 out of 10 churches, they will tell you, the angels came from the sky, they saw beautiful women, and they married them. Where did you get that interpretation from? I don't know, my pastor said so. Where did he get it from? I don't know, his pastor must have told him. But when you go into the Bible, the Bible says Adam and Eve had two sons, named Cain and Abel. The Bible says Cain slew Abel and God gave Adam and Eve another son called Seth. Then the Bible begins to give you the generation of the children of Cain. What, they were so wicked that one of them, when he killed a man, he went back to his wives and celebrated and said, Look, I killed a man. And if Adam, if sorry, if, if Cain will be forgiven, I will be forgiven even more by God. So they were what? Wicked. It was a generation of people that were wicked. And the Bible says, after this, God gave Adam and Eve a son called Seth. And he, Seth, gave birth to children. And the Bible says, then at this time from this family men began to call upon the name of the Lord so there were two families on earth the family of Seth and the family of Cain and the family of Seth were the children of God and the family of Cain were of the seed of the wicked one. Amen. 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 Alright. So now, the children of God saw the children of Cain and said, they're human beings just like us. And look, they're beautiful. And so they 
married them. But they came from a descent that didn't have much knowledge or regard of God. Yeah. They were human beings just like you. Huh? They look just like you. They walk just like you. They talk just like you. They eat what you eat. They eat what I eat. They drink what you drink. They drink what I drink. But they are not of the seed of God. Why? So God says, I will not always what? Strive with man. So who was he having a problem with? Was it angels? No. He said he will no longer strive. To strive means to try to change you, to try to correct you, to try to stop you from doing something. The sons of God were men. And I'm going to share with you the only difference that God saw between the sons of Cain and the sons of Seth was that one group loved God, called upon God, and the other did not. There are only two races to this day on the earth. Those who love God and those who don't. Amen. There is no black race, white race, red race, yellow race. There is no such thing. These are wicked creations made by men and women of wickedness for all manner of political, economic, religious, and all manner of biased reasons. And it has brought pain and wickedness and hurt and war and torment to this earth. And God raised a church that a church might speak to these wicked things and not ignore it and act as though it does not exist. Amen. Now, we turn to the New Testament. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Amen. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to Seven. Amen. I'll read. And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Greeks against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reasonable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full. Please, please, excuse me, please, thank you. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Okay, I just wanted to put the plug in for them. But it's telling you that there was a schism. There was a problem. Amen? And the Hebrew women and the Greek women, women had a problem. Is that not so? So you see, the apostles didn't say to themselves, Oh, when, when they mentioned the problem, the apostles didn't say, oh, let's not talk about this. I, 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 are, we, are, we, are we there? Yeah. Amen. Good to see you, Sister Annette. All right. Hi. Praise God. Hi, kid. All right. Amen. Look. All right. <laughs> All right. So it says, 
verse 1, chapter, Acts chapter 6, verse 1 says, And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a what? Murmuring of the Greeks against the Hebrews. So in the church, huh, there were some people of a particular nationality, and there were others of a different nationality. And some of them began to feel they were being discriminated against. Is that not so? Is that not what he's saying? Did the apostles say, let's not talk about this. Let's just live our lives as though it does not exist. Is that what they did? No. They addressed the matter. They spoke to it. But we live in a society today where the church doesn't address all of these things. Huh? When the Nigerians start church, all the Nigerians go to that church. And even the Nigerians themselves, they dichotomize themselves. They have the Yoruba church, then they have the Igbo. They, is that not so? Yeah. They have the white church, they have the Hispanic church, they have the Korean church, they have the black church. Is that not so? Yeah. Is that not so? Sure. You think that is God? You think God is in that? No. But it works beautifully for those who want to create a business with church. Huh? Because I, I, I'm a businessman. And one of the things we learned was something called market segmentation. Is that not so? You look for particular demographics. You look for certain people. Huh? You say, this is the market I want to work with. I want to work with people who only make income of $30,000 a year to $50,000 a year. I only want to work with females and sell my products to them. Is that not so? Let's say you sell hair products. Huh? Don't you, don't you think you make more money if you sell to ladies than if you sell to men? Is that not so? Exactly. How, how would you like to, how successful do you think your business would be if you make shaving cream and you market to women? Huh? How many women have beards? Exactly. So they have used those same concepts from the world and brought it into the gospel. And you are in church, but you don't know you're a consumer. You're, you're suddenly being sold to. And you are entertained. They have beautiful music to entertain you and make you feel happy. But your life stays the same. No change. Why? Because the only thing that can change you is the Spirit of God. Amen. Nothing wrong with music. Music is beautiful. Amen. Nothing wrong with music is great. Huh? Nothing not wrong with joking. It's good to joke. Okay? But when you are in a ministry because they have beautiful guitars and music and violin and all that and the pastor is very funny, you are rubbing yourself because the purpose for which you are there is to obtain a spiritual impartation. Amen. Something from God to you. Praise God. That's the purpose for which you are there. Amen. So, uh, if there's joking and music and all that as an additional benefit, fantastic, good, take it. But if there's all of those things, we have 5,000 members. We have all this, but there's no spiritual essence. No spiritual essence. Praise God. No spiritual essence. Then you are robbing yourself. So your Bible says, test the spirits to see if they are of who? God. Huh? You can only test something that is spiritual with something that is what? Spiritual. The Bible says comparing spiritual with spiritual. Amen. So we have seen here in Genesis 6 and here in Acts, in Genesis 6, God is angry. Why? He says because the sons of God were marrying who? The daughters of men. And we said that the sons of God are not angels. They are men. Because the Bible right there says, God said, I will no longer continue to struggle and quarrel with man over this topic. <laughs> Amen. Okay? The sons of God are a kind of man. Those who love God. Those who have the seed of God. Amen. 
And in the book of Acts, we saw where the church came together and it says, in fact, I don't want to read too much meaning into it, but it seems that truly the Greeks did have a point. It seemed that they were discriminated against. Verse 1, Acts chapter 6, verse 1. It says there, it said, because their widows were neglected. Is that not what it said? It is there because they thought they were being neglected. They were being neglected because they were not Hebrews. Huh? Is that not so? Is that not so? So, we discriminate against some people in the assembly because they are not from our hometown <laughs> or whatever. You understand? And it was happening in the book of Acts. Verse 2 says, Then the twelve, that's the apostles, called the multitude of the disciples. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. And now we're in verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reasonable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. In other words, they, this, this, this issue needs to be addressed. Amen. This issue of racism needs to be what? Addressed. They didn't say, Shh, let's just act, you know, we just act like, okay, let's start a new, let's start a new branch. We start a church over the other side of town. The, the Hebrew Christians, you go there. Okay? And the Greek Christians, you go to the other side of town. You have your own church over there. Amen. They said, no, let's address this problem. Let's deal with this problem. Huh? Let's talk about it. Raise seven men whose job it is to what? Look into this matter. While we attend to prayer and fasting. Because there's a level you get to. Amen. You're spending your time in prayer and fasting. Is that not so? But there are other people in the church whose job it is to manage the brethren. Because there will be schisms. There will be problems. There will be people who feel left out. Right? Somebody has to look out for them. Somebody has to go out and let them understand that's okay. And somebody has a problem. Uh, uh, since my husband died, they don't regard me in church anymore. That happens. But if there's nobody to go look for this woman. No, you know what I'm saying? So she'll be all there, all on her own. Yeah. All right. So just to, just to understand that what we are doing this morning, the word we're going to this morning is, is scriptural. So anybody there saying, why is he talking about race? No, it's in the Bible. So we should talk about it. Amen. We should talk about it. Don't want to talk about it? That's your problem. But I'll talk about it. Praise God. Now, let's look at a very funny scripture. Okay. Numbers, go to the Old Testament now. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 16. Old Testament. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 16. Everybody turning there? Yes. Praise God. I'll read. Amen? And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had what? Yeah. Married. For he had married what? An Ethiopian woman. Oh. By the way, this was not, had nothing to do with color. They were just different ethnic groups. Okay? It's very important I make you understand one thing. Moses and Ethiopians look the same. If not, there was no way Pharaoh's daughter could have said, it's my son. Amen. All right. But I want you to see here that God hates discrimination based on ethnicity or race or any such thing. Verse 2, and they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out, you three, 
unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam and they both came forth. Verse 6. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house? With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Verse 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against who? Them. And he departed. <laughs> See, when God is angry with you, what does he do? He departs. Praise God. And you don't want God to depart because when God departs, man, the devils come for a, for a meal. <laughs> Verse 10. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became what? Leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked unto Miriam. And behold, she was what? Leprous. Now, please, white here doesn't mean white like if you see a person who's white on the street. You say, ah, he's got leprosy. No, this is nothing to do with that, okay? This is not, nothing to do with that, all right? Right. Now, she became leprous. This is his big sister. What God said to her was, Moses and I talk face to face. Do you think if he was about to get married, he wouldn't have asked me for an okay? <laughs> I don't know if you guys are seeing that. <laughs> I mean, if you want to get married, don't you ask God, God, is this the woman for me to marry? Huh? Don't you, do you think Moses would just get up and get married? So God is telling them, don't you think Moses, my servant, who talks to me face to face, would have gotten an okay from me? Before he marries. But to them. She was of a different ethnic group. And so why should Moses marry her? Are you guys seeing it? Now let me say something. This is one person this happened to right? What do you think will happen to a whole society. That does the same thing. <laughs> huh? What do you think will happen to a whole country that does the same thing? This is just a microcosm of what is coming down the pike on us. And the church needs to deliver itself from this condemnation by setting ourselves free from this sort of wickedness. Amen. The Bible says God is no respecter of persons. For among all nations and amongst all peoples, all are accepted by him who call upon his name. Amen. Amen. It's clear. All right. Verse 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee. He's calling his, el his younger brother, my Lord. Uh, his eyes are finally clear now. All right. Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. Verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. Verse 15. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Amen. So, do we see here how God treats discrimination? Amen. Do we see how God treats it? You still want to discriminate against somebody of a different race? You think that's cool? Huh? You still think that's cool? Why did he marry a white girl? 
Why did he marry a black girl? Huh? Why did he marry Yoruba? <laughs> you think that's cool? Well, you've got leprosy on its way. And what is leprosy? Leprosy means the inability to become, to be sensitive to touch. That's all it means. It simply means you lose the capacity to what? Be sensitive to the things of God. Amen. And you continue in sin and wickedness with joy and happiness. You will not even know there's anything wrong. They were angry at the man because he said to his girlfriend, don't bring black people to my basketball game. Even though all his players were black. Even though half his fans are black. And even though his girlfriend was half black. And we're all angry. How dare he say that? But while I was reading the story, I saw that it says he is married, he has three grown children, and his girlfriend is young enough to be his granddaughter. I said, and he even comes out on TV and sits with her, and the whole society knows we were not angry at that. Now we're angry. Huh? Now we're upset. But no, if we're not careful, we're going down with him. Unless he repents, of course. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So, let's go now to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 to 6. Because I want us to see where... The idea comes from, okay, that has been misinterpreted, all right? Because you remember when Jesus saw the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, he asked her to give him water to drink. Is that not so? And the woman told Jesus, how come you, being a Jew, asked me to give you water? Do you understand what, you see, if you don't go back into history... You don't have any idea the meaning or the import of that question. Because to the Jews, if you drink from the same cup with a Samaritan, you became defiled. <laughs> and Jesus intentionally went where he knew the woman was coming and he saw her and said, woman, give me to drink. And when the woman started questioning him, he said, listen, if you knew who it was asking you for water, you'd have asked him, and he would have given you water, you would drink, and never thirst again. So bottom line was, Jesus really didn't need her water. <laughs> he needed a relationship with her. You say, well, how, how can you say that? Well, no. He did. He wanted to have a personal relationship with her. Every single person that Jesus comes to meet, he comes to meet you for one reason. To have a personal relationship with you. And he will use anything to draw you to him. Yeah. Amen. Alright, children, are you getting this? Alright? He will use anything to draw you to him. Okay? And so, um, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1. We'll take it from one to, one to six. I'll read. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess, to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, and that notice it's going to give you seven, the name of how many nations? Seven of them, right? These are what we call the seven abominable nations. Okay? It's important that we understand them. So, Remember, you can underline those names when I read them out to you. It will be of value to you in the years to come. The Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Okay? Seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make what? You see it again? 
neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from what? That's the only reason. Not because they're of a different ethnic group, but because they don't love Jesus. They don't love God. And they will turn you from me. The Ethiopian woman, by the way, the Bible says her father was a priest. <laughs> Amen. When Moses came out of the wilderness, out of Egypt, and was in the wilderness, and Moses was trying to minister to everybody by himself, her father told Moses, what you're doing shouldn't be this way. Do it like this. And God agreed with what her father said. His name was what? Jethro. Amen. So it's nothing to do with race or whatever or ethnicity or whatever, but whether the individual or the people or the family love God. And if they don't love God, you shall not marry them. Amen. Verse 4. For they will turn away thy son from following me, and that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. You shall destroy their what? Altars. Altars. And break down their what? Images. And cut down their what? And burn their graven images with fire. Amen. Did he say kill them? No. His problem is with what? Their religion. You see that? God doesn't discriminate against anybody by race. God never cursed any race or any people. No such thing. It's a blasphemy to accuse God of cursing any person. Talk less of any people. Amen. Now, as time goes on, okay, we see that the people, of course, they fight with them. They have war. You know, they, destroy, they actually kill them physically and all that. You understand? Why? Because the people want to hold on to their religion and won't let the people move into the land, okay? But the primary thing that God has enmity with is what? Their religion. Their, the fact that they are worshipping trees and groves and stones and all these things. And God doesn't want you to be in that, in that, in that line. Amen? Amen? All right. Now, look at um, Acts chapter 17. If you have any questions, you know, just write it down and at the end we can take a time of questions and answers. Amen. Acts chapter 17 from verse 22 to 31. Alright. Amen. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Ethel, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Verse 23, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare unto you. Verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Verse 25, Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Sin he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Verse 36. And he had made of one blood of all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Just a second. Yeah. Verse 26 is our key scripture. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Angel. Who's angel? Angel. Okay. Heaven. Heaven. Let me read this scripture to you. And I want you, your little girl, 
I want you to tell me what you make of it. Okay? I'm going to read it to you. Verse 26. Okay? And God has made from one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth. What does that mean to you? Yeah. Because isn't God made Eve from the rib of the Adam? Yeah. Are you talking yes. Talking so everybody came from Adam and Eve, correct? So we are all brothers and sisters, right? Okay. No, the reason I asked the child was because I want the adults to see how silly we are. Because if it's something a child can grasp and can understand. And can you remember, oh, but by the way, did we all come from Adam and Eve? Where did this other thing come from? Amen. Sorry, go ahead, verse 27. He said that they should seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him and find him, do ye, it be not far for every one of us. Verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain as or certain also of your own a poet have said, for we are also his offspring. Verse 29. For as much as we are all the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, given by art and man's device. Just a second. Okay. Remember in the Old Testament we just read yeah. where God said them, listen, destroy their trees, destroy their gods, destroy their this, destroy their that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what is he saying to us here? He's telling these people, this is New Testament, that look, he's, Paul is trying to reconcile these people to God. He's trying to tell them, listen, you don't, this other way is false. Jesus is the only way. This is the true way. That's basically what he's saying there. Sorry, go ahead. Verse 30. And the times... Of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Verse 31. Because he had appointed a day in the which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men, in that he had raised him from the dead. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this is the true religion then. Yeah. Not to worship God in trees or stones or whatever. But one of the things God told Moses that they should destroy when they entered there was something in the book of the channel called images. Is that not so? What's an image? What's an image? An image is something I do, I that... Do wash, I do wash. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But you see, on one level, mm -hmm. it is an idol. Something you can see, like a monkey, a goat, or whatever. Somebody carved. Mm. But on another level, it is something in your mind yeah. that you have elevated yeah. and it takes a higher call in you than God. <laughs> okay? Mm. And there are all kinds of images that Satan is throwing at you and I that make me and you know better than somebody who actually went to build a big statue of a donkey and said, oh my God, I worship you. Huh? And when this donkey looks sad, he says, does the donkey's face look sad? And you start feeling sad. The God of donkeys is unhappy with me. Is that not so? So, anytime you're, maybe it's a football team. Your football team loses. It's just a game. Okay? It's just a game. Is that not so? But it has turned into a God. Maybe it's your child. Your only child. Whom you love so much. Everything about your life is for what? That child. If the child has a small temperature. It's like the world is about to end. Isn't that what God did to Abraham? He said, bring me your child. 
your only child whom you love so much. I mean, God really made it hard for Abraham, didn't he? Why did he just say, give me your child, your only child? Or just give me your child. He says, give me your child, one. Your only child, two. Whom you lo-. It's like God is reminding him how precious. I mean, <laughs> it's like God is not making it easy for this guy. Amen. Why? Because this was an image. He had lived almost 100 years with no child. And now he has the child. And God says, would you give it up for me? And I'm sure Abraham must have said a few years earlier, of course, God. That one day God says, okay, prove it. Are you with me? And so the Bible says, you and I are children of Abraham if we have the same faith of who? Abraham. My question to you is, what image have you given up? What has it cost you to be a Christian? In fact, Nowadays, it's even a good job description. If you're looking for a job and uh, your manager knows you're a Christian, he knows you're not going to steal their money. Huh? So, what has it cost you to be a Christian? Ask yourself, what, what, does, what does it cost you to be a Christian? Well, if there's no price, if there's no price, have you met somebody you want to marry and the person is not a serious, he's a Christian, or she's a Christian, but they're not serious with God. And you say, let's just manage it that way. And I believe God will make him better as time goes on. It never works, does it? It never works. It never works. Do you understand? These are images. Or you meet somebody who says, I believe in God, I go to church. But you ask her, where did you become a Christian? She says, I was born a Christian. Right there you know you don't have a Christian. Nobody is born a Christian. At some point in your life, you have to recognize that there's something about your life that is incomplete. And that that void needs to be filled. And when you pray to God, God reveals Jesus to you. And you ask him into your life. And things begin to become better. And move you towards a perfect day. Amen. Amen. Alright. Alright. Another scripture we said was um, Galatians chapter 3 verse 23 to 28. Galatians chapter 3. Uh, could you hit that? Um, the light there please. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 to 28. Go ahead, brother. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. Yeah, 23 to 28. But before faith came, you were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterward be revealed. Verse 24. Therefore the law was our school master to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Verse 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a school master. But for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized unto Christ. For what? Put on Christ. For what? For as many of you as 